I Met the Antichrist Story by yours truly I met him three years ago while working the graveyard shift at a fast food joint. It was late in my shift Sunday night or morning, however you want to see it. It was 3 a.m. That's the time I usually take my lunch. That day, as always, I went out back to spend my half hour just smoking a cigarette and playing on my phone. Suddenly, I noticed a man sitting in the shadows behind the dumpster. I put the cigarette out, pocketed my phone, and walked towards him. I thought it might be a homeless man just trying to loiter on the property, so I was going to do the kind thing, go over to him, ask him to pick up his things, and promptly leave. However, as I got closer, I noticed it wasn't a homeless man. It was my co-worker, Rictus. He was out back too, on his lunch, I guess. Hey, Rictus, I said half-assedly. I hated Rictus. He was younger than I was. Just started working here three months ago. He was one of those fresh out of high school, working through college type kids you see working at your average fast food joint. He wouldn't be a bad kid, at least not if he had some friends and, you know, if he wasn't so damn depressing to be around. All he ever did was mope around. He never talked and he didn't even own a cell phone. I know how you feel about me, John. So stop pretending to be nice. He said with his annoying monotone voice. What? I responded. You hate me. If you only got to know who I really am, maybe you would understand why I am so sad all the time. At this, I felt uncomfortable. And I honestly didn't feel like hearing his sobby backstory. Before I could turn my back to him and leave, he said something that completely caught me off guard. Nothing you come up with can get you off the hook now. You just stay there and listen. I know every good and every bad thing you've ever done. Also everything Everyone, everyone else that comes through here has done. I know you think about it. As a child, you went to church. Your faith isn't as strong as it used to be when you were younger, but you still think about it. You continue to ask yourself, because of what you see in today's current events, you think about it. To this, I anxiously replied, is this the end of times? No, he stated firmly, nor are we any closer to the apocalypse. What if I told you the Bible got it all wrong? The end of days is not in our future because it already happened and we lost. We are the fallen. We were cast out along with our father, Lucifer. (laughs) Wait, what? Okay, Rictus. I'll leave you alone, man. I won't tell anybody about this. Just do me a favor. Get some help, man. You're fucking crazy. I said as I began to turn my back to him and walk off. How do I know all of this, you ask? Come on, I can read your thoughts. Yes, I scared you, and for that, John, I apologize. You know you want to know, but you're too scared to ask, he said teasingly. By now, he had stood up 
and moved into the light, and he wore a grin from ear to ear. Everything he had said was right. I was scared. I gave in and asked, how do you know all this? I know because I, I am the Antichrist. I was there when God struck my father down one last time. I set all of it in motion. A fierce battle between good and evil. We were so damn close to winning too. So close, he replied. No, I can't believe it. I won't. There are many good people on this planet of all faiths that have done a many good things, I argued. We weren't always demons, you know. We were once angels. We chose to rebel. So can you blame some of us for choosing to help others in need? Who are you to judge? The Bible got it wrong. When you die here, there is nothing after. There is no hell. There is no heaven. Just the hole six feet in the ground. And if you think cremation will help you out of this, think again. Your body turns into ashes while the smoke carrying your soul gets into the atmosphere only to get caught in the clouds to which later you rain down nourishing earth's vegetation. He said all this with such conviction. I was in complete, I was in a complete state of shock and my body felt heavy with an overwhelming sense of dread and hopelessness. I have the answer to your next question too. So what is my purpose here? Truth is, I could, I could raise all sorts of hell here and rule over all of you. However, when you live amongst your kin as long as I have, you learn a thing or two. After the war between good and evil, and we lost, God gave us the task to rebuild the world. Everything from the caveman to modern day guys like you and I. Was us. Every good great man and every evil dictator. All us. When there were no more of God's angels to fight. We fought ourselves. I saw all of this. And after a while. I got to thinking, our kind, our race, is a race of lying, murderous, cheating, and merciless beings with no end. Sure, a few of us are pure bloods and live forever. Others, like you, a common demon, will never outlive me. I can make everyone suffer. I can torture them for all eternity. But where is the fun in that? You have all become so desensitized to anything that if you were to kill someone today and not get caught, you would go straight home, sleep on it, and wake up the next day like nothing ever happened. It got quiet. Neither of us spoke. I couldn't argue with him. I was too scared too scared to question the information he had just relayed on me. Your half hour lunch is over. You should go back to work, he said. Almost sounded disappointed. I slowly made my way back to the restaurant's back door, but before my hand reached the door handle, he had this last thing to say. No. No amount of good things, good gestures, or donations will get you into heaven. So your plan to be a better person tomorrow is useless. You, choose it. you chose this side long ago, whether you remember or not. God forgives, but never forgets.
With that in mind, I entered the fast food restaurant and closed the door behind me. I looked at my co-workers. Only now I could see them for what they really were. Beautiful, sexless, angelic creatures with broken wings. Their eyes reflecting the same sense of dread and hopelessness that I have felt. That I had been feeling since Rictus told me what we really were.